Hi, I'm Edgar Jerens, and I have a book coming out, Edgar Jerens' Life in Charcoal. It features my narrative drawings. Hardcover, published by Goff Books, 120 pages, 96 illustrations, Curator Robert Casolino wrote an essay called Life Amplified. Jim Thornton wrote about my family's history in From Riga to Omaha, Three Generations of Art. My name is John Thornton, and I've been close friends with Edgar Jarens since we met at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts in 1976. The next year, I introduced Edgar to my identical twin, and Jim, Edgar, and I have been like brothers ever since. You can see the power of Edgar's art in this drawing that he made of Jim and me watching our father descend the staircase of our family home. I once said, Edgar's drawings are not about life, they are life. Edgar, what's the backstory for these haunting works? There's been much joy in my life, but also heartache. I think my drawings reflect the difficulties we all face and the need sometimes just to accept things and to endure. My parents, Rita and Gunnars, were in Latvia during the Second World War and lived through Soviet occupation and years in refugee camps in Germany before emigrating to Nebraska. They had four children, Ron, then me, then Tom, and finally Alex. In 1976, when I was 17 and about to come east to art school, Ron shot himself and I held his hand while he was dying. Once a gifted artist, and my role model, he had been fighting a losing battle with schizophrenia. In his last drawing, Ron's suffering has come to a breaking point. Oh God, please help me gain the peace of heart you promised, we believers. Eight years later, my youngest brother, Alex, heard voices in his head ordering him to kill his girlfriend. He killed himself instead. In 2017, Tom, my only remaining brother, died homeless in Omaha after years of addiction, prison, and misery. He was only 57. Edgar recently visited me and Nancy in our home in Ocean City. Nancy volunteered to read a passage from Edgar's book. As for Edgar, the immediate aftermath of Ron's death felt surreal. I remember going to school the next day. I could barely walk. I just put one foot in front of the other until I got there. It sounds weird today, but nobody talked to me about what happened. There weren't any school grief counselors back then, and nobody offered therapy of any kind. You were just expected to go on with life as if nothing had changed. After a couple weeks, the shock started to wear off. I took consolation in art and found myself more determined than ever to become the best artist I could. Ron's death turned this ambition into a mission. So much talent lost to the world. I was determined to honor him by making art for the both of us. Edgar's high school portrait of his cousin Mike is my favorite work of his before these big charcoal drawings. Like them, this feels utterly honest and real.
you didn't start doing these drawings until 20 years after we graduated. I say this with all due respect. I wasn't all that crazy about some of the work you were making before these. What caused you to move in this new direction? There were a number of factors. In the earlier work, I was attempting to create a world of beauty, but I realized you were right and you gave me a blistering critique. What did I say? You told me, and I quote, Edgar, not only have you adopted 19th century academic techniques, you're using their subject matter also. And it has nothing to do with contemporary life. Ouch. But it wasn't just me. What were the other factors? After my dad died in 1999, I could no longer hide from loss and tragedy. It wasn't just my family. Many of my friends were struggling too with what would eventually be termed diseases of despair. Drug overdoses, suicide, and alcoholism. On a happier note, I connected with New York Gallery Director Peter Tatischeff, who offered me a solo show. Peter challenged me to do work that was not in any way commercial. This was very liberating. Edgar, I truly believe these are some of the most powerful artworks made so far in the 21st century. What do you hope viewers and readers will derive from them? Thanks, John. I love narrative art. Documenting the times we are living through is one of my primary goals. My drawings depict real people, mostly friends and family, confronting different forms of adversity in their natural environments. These are people who never expected to find themselves subjects for narrative art, but whose stories nevertheless need to be told. I wish to express the hardship of my subjects' lives in a way that is neither hopeless nor sentimental, but which provokes compassion for their suffering and admiration for their endurance. You can pre-order Edgar Jaron's Life in Charcoal from Amazon and other places. It will ship on August 29th, 2023.